Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the RK Tokens podcast. We are the RK Tokens. I am the anomaly, Will Farrow. Cleo Thomas, a.k.a. Mr. Slick Living. Patrick Cloud. It is 2021, and fellas, I, I, I kind of have something to break to y'all before we get into this. And um, this is something we're going to need to start kind of thinking about uh, doing very soon. Mm. Fellas, we are about to come up upon our 100th episode of the arcade tokens i was cleaning up the page last last night and i was just like we always kind of had this thing of like the arcade tokens podcast and the arcade tokens and so technically all of them fall under a podcast so in all actuality we are on season four of our podcast and we are about to reach our 100th episode of this show of the podcast itself not like uh total videos on the channel right no 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 not retro gaming not phantom fiction nothing pat from wow. when you and i played left for dead 2 that was first one that was our first one left i dead remember 2. the marketing for that that's yeah. what's crazy about that yeah wow from that on up to now that's insane Yes, we are, we, plus are, we are reaching crazy. to 100 episodes. Just this one alone. I got it. We have to have a zombie-themed Left 4 Dead group game with, like, our extended tokens, too, just okay. to show the progress. Yeah. We should just I'm have down. a giant zombie shooting fest with the original game, maybe, like, the original four episodes. Like, because I think it was what, like, Left uh, 4 Dead, Batman? Yep, Left 4 Dead, Batman. I think we did Spider Man and one more, I have to remember. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty solid. So I think that, yeah, that'd be dope to like rotate like four games or like our first four episodes. Oh, yeah. And then maybe like the game that we played uh, first when Cleo joined. That would be Assassin's Creed Origins. Is that the one with Egypt? The Egyptian one is what, what I first that's remember first recall one? walking in. Yeah, yeah, that's my that's first, first time Cleo yeah. ever came on. And then the next yeah. one is season two or three is when he came on, I think, for Days Gone. And that's when you were like officially a member. Yeah, man. A lot of zombies. The zombies yeah. has st- stood the test of time in gaming and it's still solid. We just it's, it works every time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. It does work every single time. But uh, fellas, just like that good news, I want to keep the good news going. So in case for those that have not heard, a lot of changes going on in 2021 when it comes to movies and television. Things getting announced, things getting canceled, things getting rebooted. You never know which way until it drops. But one thing we had consistently kept hearing about, Deadpool. Mm. Now, Deadpool has gone through the ringer. Let's just let's just say that X Men or uh, uh, X Men Origins Wolverine mm. we don't um, talk about that. to being uh, getting a movie, then getting shelved and never having a movie coming out yeah. to Ryan Reynolds releasing the test footage and it blowing up so big that the fans were like, we will not watch a single Fox movie unless you get this movie out. Now, not only do we get one, which was awesome, we got a second one, which was also awesome. And now to confirm big news, there's a third Deadpool movie coming and he is also being introduced into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That means all of this takes place where Iron Man, Spider-Man, now the Fantastic Four, the Hulk. Can you just imagine this MCU with Deadpool now introduced into this world? Thoughts, fellas? This is my favorite superhero by far. Well, Superman, Spider-Man is right next to it. But I just feel like uh, I can't even imagine because his dynamic with breaking the fourth wall and, and, and say, talking about what's actually happening in Hollywood was so good because it was so obvious. The, the Sony thing with the characters and stuff like that, like it was some of the best jokes were, was him making, like I wish the studio couldn't give you guys more X-Men. Like who's in this mansion? Like it's just, yeah. you guys. <laughs> they couldn't get beast. Like that was so funny to me. So the fact that that 
we're going to get so many jokes like his dynamic with, I mean, I wish we could have seen him in uh, Tony Stark, but I mean, it could be in a time before Stark died, you know, like I want to, I just want to see everything. <laughs> it's, I just want to see that. It doesn't even matter if there's a storyline. I just want to see the interactions. Yeah. Deadpool has had some great comic stories with the Hulk, of course, Wolverine, which he's been, you know, tr- Ryan Reynolds himself had been trying to campaign to get Hugh Jackman to put the claws back on one more time. He couldn't make it happen. He has these, this story called uh, Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe. And I'm very curious on how they're going to roll him out, man. Because I personally think it's, a, it's, kind of, it's weird. They're taking a risk here by letting it be an R-rated Deadpool film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Disney. That's what I'm saying. This is this is a big switch up. This isn't something I expected to happen. I thought, well, that's it. I shrugged my shoulders. As soon as it was bought, I was like, that's it. We'll never see him again. But no, they're taking the risk. We, so them opening up this door means we'll get a Blade movie that could be just as dark. Mm-hmm. That's an R-rated film. That's for sure. It has to be Great one. Point. Oh, yeah. So, huh. I like it. It, it makes <laughs> me think that I j- I'm very curious of the story, and I, I want to see him interact with Mark Ruffalo's Hulk. I want to see him interact with uh, um, sure. Hawkeye. And oh, I want to see him act with maybe maybe Star-Lord. Those are the three oh. that I think his dynamic as an actor, Ryan Reynolds just being Deadpool, those scenes would be amazing. I don't, yeah. I don't know if I'm going for a Deadpool story in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Anymore. Right? You kind of just like, yo, can you know. just walk around this thing? You don't even need a story. Just walk yes. around. Yes. <laughs> yes. Can, can you put yourself after like Infinity Wars or like Endgame and then just go from there? Yeah. Mine that I'm excited to want to see him with is ones that they, they press on in the comics, but they haven't really here. And I just can't wait to see what Ryan Reynolds does, not only in the film with these characters, but outside with the actors. And that's Tom Holland and Spider-Man, because yeah. the two of them in the comics are hilarious together. Yeah. So to see them live action with Ryan Reynolds doing it, I cannot wait. Him and Blade as well. I can't wait to see him because him and Blade also have a lot of encounters together. And also Daredevil. Him and Daredevil, because they've already talked about rumors that the guy, Charlie Cox, that plays Daredevil in the uh, Netflix show is supposed to be now the MCU's official Daredevil as well. Damn. Yeah, so they, they decided to not recast. They got called up from game. NXT pretty much. They got right, called up to right. the main roster. Do you yeah. guys think any characters or bigger characters like Spider-Man will strategically not be in the film just because of what Cleo was talking about? I would say that had they not did the cameo with all the X-Men. When they brought back Professor X, they brought back uh, Kelsey Grammer and stuff like that, and they showed that cameo of them, it gave me an opportunity to understand, okay, he could be in an R-rated film, and they could have a very small cameo. Because as long as they own everything, he just doesn't have to interact and say any curse words when he's with, like, say, like Spider-Man or something like that. Yeah, are you talking about the scene where uh, he was in the mansion and the whole cast was in it, and they like slowly and they just the slow and they close the door. It could yeah. be the same thing with Tom Holland, where he just pat like he could be passing by and Spider-Man is just right there. But it can always still have all those cameos. He could even talk crap. I would love to see him interact with Cap, and he go, "Hey, language." And just whatever his response is about to be. Yeah. All right, man. But yeah, I am. I cannot wait to see uh, him interact with a few of these people. But another thing, too, I'm also curious about as well, like how you said about um, how they might do with the R rating, too. Just who else will be interacting? Because as we see on the uh, picture here, for those that's on the audio, we have the Deadpool poster, but we also have Cable on there, and we also have Domino on there. And, you know, for anybody that hasn't seen Deadpool 2, it's a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, Cable's still there. Like, Cable never left. So Cable is still present in this universe, which means technically X-Men are in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I think that's another thing that we people aren't like have really figured out. We are now confirmed that X-Men are here. So now who makes the cut though? Does Colossus come back? Is that the official Colossus of the MCU? Uh, Does Nega, what, Nega Sonic uh, Teenage Warhead, is she officially an X-Men for the MCU now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm so so over X-Men, dog. And it sucks to say it, but it's the truth. 
Nah. I'm so over it, man, because we had our first three. Then we have First Class, which, in my opinion, is the best of the X-Men films. Like, that First Class is just amazing. That's what I wanted to see as X-Men films. Logan is in a league of its own. You, we, bringing Deadpool into the Marvel Cinematic Universe opens yet another doorway for X-Men to be introduced. But you already have WandaVision as well, which I believe, when it premieres on Disney+, Plus, will lead us to understanding how mutants per se, may come into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. According to Disney, that's supposed to tie in. Kevin Feige said WandaVision will help uh, expand the Marvel Cinematic Universe even more. We got several doors with Deadpool to open, bro. They slick. I bet they're going to keep all of them and just bring them in. Hmm. What, first class? Yeah, because think about it. If the, the multiverse breaks open... If that's what they're really pushing at, it's easy to transfer in everybody, especially now that we know all three Spider-Mans are going to be in one film. But that's, that's, what multi- that's multiverse. Yeah, that's a different thing, though, Will. No, I that's all like- of this. No, because remember, the, uh, Doctor Strange next one is the multiverse of madness. I know that, Will, but the Spider-Man thing, once it's, it's a whole different monster to deal with. That's Sony. That's them. They do what they want to do with Spider-Man. Marvel, Disney now has pretty much everybody else except Morbius. Um, what's that? Venom? Mm-hmm. Spider Man's. But think about it. Fox and Fox gave this to Disney. Now Disney has all of the X Men, and remember, they recast everybody. Mm-hmm. So you still got uh, the chick from Game of Thrones as Jean Grey. You still have those set up. Not saying that they need to come in there. I wouldn't mind seeing a recast. But to have acquired all of that and to not in some way have that interact with the MCU seems like that's – why wouldn't that not happen? I just – I feel like Disney would want to make their own thing. You that know maybe, I mean? Yeah, maybe true and too. If, and it's also like the actors have aged through the years. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't you know, I loved Magneto. Um, and, and I just, I feel like he, what's the actor's, actor's name? Michael Fassberger. I feel like he, he could still be a, a, an amazing Magneto. Let's yeah, yeah, same could yeah. James yeah. McAvoy as Professor But my, my point is Disney, like they, I, I just feel like the, the way that they brought Spider-Man to life with Tom Holland, mm-hmm. they're just, they're just in their bag right now. So I feel like X-Men kind of just comes with, a lot of like soured fans. And I feel like they have a shot of giving us brand new X-Men, brand new everything and just making it dope because they always make their shit dope. I think that they should lead off before you go. I think they should lead off with the fantastic four thing first. Like X-Men is still a fresh wound. And I think you, you, you called it what like hurt fans through the years. Oh, I think you lead off with four. Yes, but look how many breaks we've had in between Fantastic Four films. We've had some times. They had their two their two originals, and then they brought back the Michael B. Jordan and. Uh, you can leave it at that. You can leave it at uh, that. What's, what's I want to know the actor, the guy who's in, in um, Whiplash. He Whiplash. Was just talking. About Miles Teller. I, I didn't mind the first two Fantastic Four movies. They weren't great, but I didn't mind them. Yeah. I, I, yeah, no, okay. I, it didn't connect with me. So, yeah, yeah, I think we go Fantastic Four first, bring them in, and then somehow let's get our X-Men cracking. Yeah, let's go ahead and recast, bro. Except Magneto and McAvoy. Except Fastburger and McAvoy. I need them both. <laughs> See, They're too that. good. They're too good. Nah, fuck that. Get Denzel as Magneto. I said what I said. All right, what's the next subject? Don't do that. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay, think about it. We all know the undertone of what X-Men is. Mm -hmm. We know where it stems from. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you went ahead and did it in that stance with two black actors as Magneto and Professor X. You don't have to give the full undertone, but it's like, yo, to see that and to see the two of them stand there, you know what's up. You already know the promo that could come from that. That's just my idea, though, but I'm sure that won't happen. What's the next topic? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to do it. All right. Moving on. Moving on to the next topic. Uh, we also have some more things um, starting to kind of come under one umbrella, kind of like how Disney is bringing in Marvel, 
um, and they also have Star Wars. So uh, the Star Wars campus also kind of taking suit and following that as well. So uh, it was officially announced that George Lucas is going to be taking uh, all of the IPs that he has from the Star Wars gaming uh, video game uh, genre, and he's going to put it all under one thing called Lucasfilm Games. So mm-hmm. all of these IPs you've seen, like The Force Awakens or uh, stuff like the... Uh, what was Star Wars Force Unleashed or Battlefront? They're now going to put all of those under one roof. So I think that's a dope thing too, because now Lucasfilms can be completely involved in every single game that's being out or being doled out rather than people just licensing them out and then doing it themselves. Yeah, this is Lucas being, George Lucas is a goddamn genius. He's a mastermind. He, he, what he's been able to do, been able to do with the Star Wars brand through the years has been truly incredible. Of course, selling it off to Disney, which went on to do their thing. The reason we have Mandalorian now, with three spinoffs. Period. I think three or more spinoffs coming out of the Mandalorian series alone. Yep. I thought that was incredible. I need a game, I need man. A game. So that pretty much means there will be a Mandalorian game. There will be a Save Grogu game coming soon. Star Wars is in their bag right now, and it's crazy because. In a lot of ways, it died, you know, for it to be a phenomenon. Like when it dropped, those first three were crazy and set the tone for a lot of like pop culture. But then it it was huge again, even though, the you know, I feel like that's when Star Wars fans were first like with the episode one and stuff. But then I feel like when they brought it back, it was just too much time. I didn't really like it when they brought it back, but between... Uh, Mandalorian and the new uh, Jedi Fallen Order game, like, I feel like whatever they would would go in, whatever direction they would go in with Lucas Games has to be fire, because they're just they're just on that wave right now, and the fact that they brought it back the way they did is crazy. Well, movie movie wise, yeah, they kind of fell off, like you said. What kept them alive, like you, uh, was the games and the shows, like Clone Wars and all of that stuff. Yeah. That's the stuff that was keeping them alive between okay. these movies dropping. Uh, like Force Unleashed, Battlefront, um, the uh, the Republic Order, and stuff like that. Like people, like they continue to drop Star Wars games actually since like PlayStation and on. Like I don't think there's no PlayStation system that doesn't have a Star Wars game at least in their uh, titles. So the they continue, to come, yeah. So they continue to come out with stuff, and that's what kind of kept them afloat, like you said. But then now they just got real strategic, partnered with Disney, and now it's just like yo, they're just taking. George Lucas's universe and expanding it to the way that it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. You stopped hearing about like Star Wars fans for a really, really long time. Like yeah. I, I even, even, I, you know, I remember Battlefront was the kind of like the bigger games and I feel like we, we played it for a little bit and then stopped, but there wasn't like really like Star Wars fans, but the fact that baby Yoda blew up the way it is and became like a crazy thing, like it's like still really like used in, in memes and stuff. And the, mm-hmm. the show has been, over for a couple of weeks. So I feel like they're just like, they're hot right now with like a whole new generation. So it's, it's oh, exciting. From the fact that Mandalorian is getting ready to launch the book of Boba Fett, which is a long history of people just dying to get something out of that character. Mm-hmm. You got that cracking off. You have the, uh, the rebel, not rebel series. Uh, the one with uh, Cara Dune's character getting ready to go on her own path. Yeah. Um, ah- Ahsoka with Rosario Dawson, her own thing. Like, bro, these all could have their own video games by them damn selves. Like, yeah. I'd play a Boba Fett game. I'd pl- I, hell yeah, I'd play a Boba Fett game for sure. I, I'd play all of those for games. sure. I'd even play the little the 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 ones that Sasha Banks was with as the Mandalorians. But I mm-hmm. like that they did they they did something very smart that would that's gonna keep them going for a very long time. And that was that you don't have to watch the previous movies to see these. They set so, up to side, yeah. Yeah, so like the fact to like give like the Mandalorian culture another person that we've never heard of, it was just like, yo, I don't have to go catch up on anything. And so like, I think they got a lot more fans to come into this because now it's like, oh, this is dope. This is beautifully shot. And I could just start right here, go into this whole universe of new people without really having to know anything. And they'll give me stuff like the Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, show to catch me up on what I've missed. Because the fact that Darth Vader is coming back. So it's just like, those are the crazy things. Actually, that's the stuff they didn't talk about with that Obi-Wan Kenobi stuff. They uh, brought, what's his name? Hayden Christensen back as Anakin. 
but they cast him. They say it's Anakin that's coming back. So does that mean we get to see the different mock-ups before he becomes Darth Vader? I think that we're going to see, with the Obi-Wan series specifically, I think we're going to see more of a live-action version of the Clone Wars. I think we're going to get those stories. I don't think we're getting Anakin already as Darth in the early days of Darth Vader. That's from the synopsis I've read. That's not what we're getting. Okay. But we'll see. Okay. We shall see. Yeah. And so, uh, also, though, continuing on to uh, the Lucasfilm type of genre. So, Star Wars, of course, is doing great. So, of course, why would they not go into something else dope that Lucasfilms have made? And that is, of course, we have heard they're getting an Indiana Jones video game. Dun, da, 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 da. <laughs> dun, da, da, da. Dun, da, da, da. Heck yeah, bro. So cool. Indy. Yeah. He's Indiana so cool. Jones, man. The whip. The hat, the hat, the leather jacket is getting its own video game finally. Uh, Bushido, uh, Bushida is going to be the uh, company. Bethesda. Uh, Bethesda, I'm sorry. My yep. wife, uh, Bushido. Shout out Bushido Brown. Bethesda is going to be the ones who are going to be creating this video game, uh, which I think is, I think is dope. I think it's just dope to see like a lot of our folks that we like from movies now kind of get, they get, uh, their own video game. Like we know um, the folks that made Hitman is making the new James Bond video game. So it's just, it's dope to see. What is, uh, I'm trying to see Bethesda's catalog. Oh, don't worry, I'm about to tell you right now, Pat. This is the ones that Xbox acquired, by the way. Skyrim, Fallout, Doom Eternal, Mm. The Elder Scrolls, Dishonored, Deathloop, all first person based stuff. Here's my thing. I know we got Uncharted. And in some ways, Uncharted is a Don't do it. version Don't do of it. what Indiana Jones could Absolutely. be. Absolutely. It is. He's Indiana Jones and Tomb Raider. Bingo. Yep. But Thez is making this. A first person Indiana Jones? No. No. Not I'm- liking it already. Nope. I don't think that's what's gonna happen though. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think I think Bethesda is gonna make some. I think it's gonna be crazy wherever he has to travel. Whatever temple we finna be in, finna look insane. Oh thanks to them. Next, because you already because you already know how Skyrim is. So you know that and mechanics wise, it's gonna be great because they don't they don't make like you played Doom Eternal, so you see how smooth it moves with everything. Right. So as long as it's not first person, but that is something to be concerned about, like Cleo mentioned. If not third, if it's third person, I think we are going to get a pretty good Indiana Jones game because there's not too much you really need to do. Skyrim was so known for making its own massive world where you can kind of make it your own thing, do your own path, do it however you want. I It would be dope if they could basically create that same world but instead of sort of like, you know how we have like fast travel whenever there's like a huge map, it would just be dope if he could like fly on a little plane, kind of just Super Mario World style to all of these places and then maybe like a back A little home prop base. plane? Yeah, like a it's little- an old school map and it kind of does that with a little line going across it and it's like, hey, this is where he's landed and then it brings up the map. Yeah, like his 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 uh, adventures through like the mummy and the, the Egyptian pyramids and stuff like that, like, if they expanded on those worlds, like like Will said, it would be so dope. Just the Skyrim imagination mixed in with like the next gen graphics. Like I'm here for it, for sure. Nah. I need Harris. I need Harrison Ford to sign off on his likeness. That's first and foremost. Yes. I need Harrison Ford to be able to sign off on his likeness for them to be able to use the CGI to make sure that it's Indiana Jones. That's one. Because I personally feel what happened with the Avengers game is the fact that we didn't have the likenesses of the actors that we knew. I, f- I think that had a, had something to do with the effect of the game not connecting with people. My I person, because <laughs> I got no, I got over it once I started playing. It just yeah. you didn't you didn't add nothing else after. Like the story was easy to beat. Online kind of got redundant with the same people, and it was just like, okay, mm-hmm. the only thing we have left to to look forward to is customizing. And that eventually will get old with all the other games that you got to play. 
Once you right. fly as Iron Man, I don't care if Robert Downey Jr. is in there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Once but Thor is doing this and throwing a hammer and coming back, I don't give a fuck who he look like. I kind of right. want to play that game again. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my two concerns. I need uh, I need Harrison Ford's likeness, and I hope it's not first person, but if you give it a third person game, that means we're competing directly with Uncharted, which is three games in, and it's it, it's incredible. I, I love mean, the Uncharted games. But if you make it free roam, now that's one thing that Uncharted don't have. If Indiana Jones became a free roam game, kind of like Assassin's Creed, that would be fire for him. And then even after the game, you can go do little slot side quests and stuff like that. Because he travels a lot, like to uh, Pat's point. Hmm. So, uh, but Bethesda uh, has a, has a, definitely a lot in store. Uh, well, a lot to live up to for this. So hopefully we'll see some kind of like trailer or something soon, just letting us see exactly how they're going to go about this game. But um, ladies and gentlemen, that has been another episode of the RK Tokens podcast. We want to thank y'all for tuning in. Those that watch on the video, those that watch on the audio and follow, like, and subscribe to all of our channels and socials. RK Tokens wise, Cleo Thomas, Patrick Cloud, Will Ferrell, and of course, Cathadius as well. So make sure y'all keep checking us out. We have been the RK Tokens. I'm the Anomaly Will Ferrell. Cleo Thomas, aka Mr. Slick Living. I'm Patrick Cloud. And we will catch you next time.